morning. Great to see you. You don't realize this, but right here on the back side of this pulpit, at my eye level as I'm sitting here, there's a passage of scripture that says John 12, 21, we would see Jesus. Now, you know, there were two of Jesus' followers on a road to Emmaus. And Jesus came close to them and walked with them and spoke with them. And they didn't know that it was Jesus. And later on, it said, as they sat and as they broke bread, their eyes were opened and they recognized him. Our hope and our prayer this morning is that through our worship, which is uh, a time that we gather together to praise God, that as you walk along this journey, you would see Jesus in our worship service here. We pray that he might be very visible to you and speak to you very clearly through our music our prayers through our family of faith that is gathered here through the preaching and the teaching of his holy word. Lord, our prayer is we would see Jesus. And for those of you who are joining us by live stream, our prayer is that for you as well. May you experience the living, reigning Lord Jesus Christ uh, as we are here in this sanctuary. And for those of you who will be joining us later on, maybe this afternoon or throughout the week on YouTube or on our Facebook recording, our prayer for you too is to draw a little closer, draw a little stronger, be faithful as you walk with the Lord and may you see and recognize him. God bless you as you come. This morning, just a few, few announcements I do want to make. Uh, confirmation will be meeting this afternoon at 4, but we also have a stated session meeting at 3. This is the first stated session meeting for our new session coming into this year. So we would pray for you to be in prayer for us. Uh, and it's an open meeting if you would like to attend. Just be with us down here in the session room at 7, I'm sorry, at 3. And if we need more space, we can always move to the fellowship hall. So certainly would be delighted to see you. Need to let you in on something special too. Next Sunday is Scout Sunday. And we'll be hearing, uh, you know, some information from our scouts by their leaders and they'll be our guests here and, and we'll be participating in worship as well. Maybe you noticed some uh, things in the fellowship hall. They had a, they had a, a, a Boy Scout uh, Eagle ceremony here uh, yesterday. So that's, uh, those things will be coming down, I'm sure, you know, this week. Um, our care ministry team is looking for volunteers this week. And volunteers means that we've got more. What, there, there's Nan. Tell me. Is it didn't take, d d no need for volunteer. Okay, all right. Thank you. Okay, well, let's just skip over that then and go right to the next thing. Uh, wonderful Wednesdays is this coming Wednesday, the last day of January. Can you believe that? Uh, need to sign up for our meal that night, our, fa our family meal, and uh, you'll find the sign-up sheet and the bulletin down here in the lobby of the educational building, or you can just give us a call, put your name in the plate, you know, when it comes by. We just want to have enough food for you to enjoy being with us as our youth club meets that evening and also our choir. Our mission trip meeting via Zoom is on Sunday, February the 4th, following the 11 a.m. worship. You'll need to meet with Madison in her office, and uh, they're going to be doing this in a special kind of way. On February the 4th, that afternoon at Shady Grove Baptist Church, we will also be um, 
commemorating our annual community memorial service. Uh, this is sponsored by the Charitable Ministerial Association. Our annual meeting here is February the 11th, the second Sunday in February. Please uh, be aware of that and uh, plan on being present with us following worship that morning. Other announcements, of course, are here. Some are inserts. Uh, uh, we've got uh, a raffle contest uh, that's starting next Sunday. It all has to do with Sunday school. You can read about that. It's right here. I'm not going to try to explain it. It's plain enough. You should be able to see that. It looks like a great thing to be going and taking place. Also, on February the 3rd, this is next Saturday morning, beginning at 10 o'clock, 10 to 11. Also at Shady Grove Baptist Church is our Alzheimer's Association program. And uh, it's led by, by Tammy Mosteller. Some of you may remember Tammy. She and her husband, her family lived here uh, for a number of years. They're now in a different location, but she's coming to lead that group and is very knowledgeable of it. Please read the other announcements that are listed here in your bulletin, especially about this part on the back here that's encouraging you in your daily prayers to pray for our church members, for our shut-ins, friends and family of church members, our military, uh, other ministries that we pray for, our partnership church in Guatemala, the Golgotha Church, and of course those with substance abuse addictions. We lift them up daily. We're encouraged to do so in prayer. Pray for the ministry of the First Presbyterian Church in Morganton, and of course in your daily prayers, the ministry here at First Presbyterian, as well as churches throughout the greater Cherville area. Please remember us in your prayers daily. Are there other announcements at this time? Hearing none, then we're going to call upon our choir. I'm sorry, let me mention one thing. That is, we had 95 contacts in our care uh, ministry this past week. It begins, of course, here on Sunday morning on the inside aisle as your care basket. Please take that, pass it across. If you're a guest with us, fill in a, a yellow sheet, but it's also uh, an invitation for you to participate in our care ministry as well, which is our prayer and visitation ministry here at First Presbyterian. Again, that was 95 contacts. You can leave your cards in the gray boxes, narthex on either side, lobby education building, down at the main entrance where you come in, and all of those places are just give us a call. We want to know and we want to pray for those that you are concerned about. Now, having said all of that, choir. <laughs>
Almighty God, whose word is authority and power, and whose way is love. Grant unto us today clear minds, understanding hearts, and willing spirits, so that we may wisely appropriate your word of truth. Lord, it's in your holy and precious name. That is the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we worship and we pray. And in our worship, we pray those words you taught your disciples. You said, pray this way, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Walking down the street, somebody bumped into you and said, I understand you attend worship over there at that Presbyterian church. What do y'all believe over there anyway? What would you say? Would you not say, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. I have a lot of the kids, but can I have any other stragglers come forward? <laughs> If you were listening, Pastor Bill said something about a raffle contest. So we're calling it Raffle Sunday. And I thought maybe I should explain it to y'all and to the adults because they will be participating too. So, what? They do not. I know, I saw what you were trying to do. He asked, do they count as friends, the adults, trying to get extra tickets? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't bring your sibling either. Sorry, it's got to be another friend. <laughs> okay, so every Sunday when you come to Sunday school, your Sunday school teacher at the end is going to give you one of these smiley raffle tickets. You're going to write your name on the back, and in right where we have the Children's Worship Center, we call that the Academy Lobby, there's going to be jars. You, you are going to take your ticket and your, with your name on the back, and you're going to put it in the jar for your grade level. So it might be K through second, third through fifth, and then for our adults, we're having a little challenge, men versus women. For our adults, but you want to put it in yours, your, your section. You count as mayonnaise. <laughs> so, what we, and then, at the beginning of March, the first Sunday in March, I believe it's March 3rd, we're going to hold breakfast at, at, at our coffee time. And I can't say, but there might be Krispy Kreme donuts there. But we are going to pick three tickets out of each of the containers. And we'll have lots of prizes to choose from. Gift cards, toys, all sorts of things. Maybe, you never know. Okay? So, you want to make sure in the month of February, you're coming to Sunday school. Every Sunday. Because every time you come to Sunday school, you get a ticket. And if you bring a friend, you get two tickets. Yep, 
two tickets. Okay. <laughs> you have four kids, but you got to bring a friend, not a sister or brother. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So, do we understand the rules of our raffle game? Yes. So, Sunday school teachers in the audience, I will be putting them in you guys' is this classroom so that you can hand it out each Sunday so you have them, so they're rare, are ready for you. All you have to do is pass them out, have the people write their names on the back, and then we put them in the jar, okay? Okay, so we're going to pray about it. Can you show me how we pray about it? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us here together. Please allow us during this month that we are Go on to Sunday school to learn your word and also have a good time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, you guys are going to go.
so much. Onward we go, and we go with prayer in our heart. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, we're, we're just full of gratitude this morning for a beautiful day you've given us, a Sunday where we can be called together worship you, Lord, and open our hearts to you, to think in our own personal thoughts and to examine our heart, but also in knowing that we're in a room and a building full of people who have the same love of a Messiah that we have, our Lord Jesus Christ. We can love you, Lord, because you first granted us the love and the ability to do so. And you call us to love you, but you also call us to love one another. And it's that which we seek to always grow in our love that you have granted. Certainly your name be praised, and where you are, there is that light and that love that we yearn for. Father, we come this morning in a time in our life when it seems like there's a whole lot of chaos circling around us. May we, by your Holy Spirit, continue to focus on instead the confusion of the world to focus upon the victory of you, our Lord Christ, that you have overcome the world that the darkness has tried to shut you out as the light, and yet the darkness has failed. And we move around and mumble around and meander around in our own human design, and that is the cause of our anxiety and our stress. It's the cause of heartache and violence it drums up hatred. But when our will is replaced by your will, then there is peace even when the world is in such a mess. So we can find ourselves now direct, directed, encouraged, and strengthened by your holy presence that we can lift up our voices in true worship, that we can sing with joy and praise, filling the atmosphere with ex exclamations that you are indeed the glorious Lord that reigns forever, that we can find our moments filled with a peace that passeth all understanding, when there is no peace to be seen nor heard, even in our land, so it seems. And truly your name be praised. We can pray for ourselves and ask for a betterment of who we are, to grow closer in our faith that you have granted, to look forward to the day when it will come that we will leave this behind and enter into that heavenly home that you have prepared for all of those who know and love you as their Lord. We can pray for ourselves, for our healing, for our guidance. We can pray for about a variety of matters in our secular world that sometimes causes us to stay awake at night. But Lord, we also know that as we pray for ourselves so that we might pray for others, exactly for that goodness that we desired for ourselves, for them as well, for strength and wholeness and healing, for power, an increased power of faith to be bold in the Lord Jesus Christ as we journey here upon this earth and in our time. We can issue, Lord, summons 
that we would pray from our heart unto you to help us with our life, within our families, within our community, within our church, within, within our state, nation, and even in this world. And so we come to you as willing servants. And we thank you for another opportunity to acknowledge your word as a living word and to show forth to the world through our examples and our work and our testimony that indeed Jesus Christ is Lord. Thank you as you bless us. May we now be blessed to bless others. And we, all of God's children, will say amen to this prayer. Amen. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10 really has a great word from the Lord concerning our gifts that he has graciously provided for us in our own life. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10, like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. Let us worship the Lord our God now as we bring his tithe and our offering. It was a long time ago you you called our name in such a loving and wonderful way and your spirit moved within us sometimes it was instantaneous and sometimes it took it took a little bit of time but we arrived where we should be and then we became aware that you have granted us tremendous blessings and personal gifts and we think how fortunate I am, and indeed we are. You've asked us to partner with you in using our gifts for the good of humanity and your holy and precious name to your glory. And so we do. God bless our gifts and the ministry to which we are called. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
Thank you. Please be seated. Uh, this morning we continue to uh, think about and and uh, discuss and you know come to the Lord about and and above all let the Lord come to us as we consider His Word on a particular theme that is so precious to each one of us individually and to the whole church. It's this theme of prayer. I'm going to be reading from three different sections of the Bible. You can open your Bible or pew Bible. You can read along silently, of course, with me. Or you can just sit and enjoy hearing God's Word read. I do believe that God always blesses the reading and the hearing of His Holy Word. We'll start with First Chronicles. First Chronicles over in the Old Testament. But let me give you a little bit of the back story before we read. The book of First Chronicles. Chronicles, get it? The reign of King David, from his anointing to his death, recorded at the end of the book. You see, his predecessor, King Saul, whose story is told in the book of 1 Samuel, never took God seriously. He even allowed the Ark of the Covenant to be neglected for 20 years, while it said abandoned in the house of a man named uh, Abinadab. Now, who was Abinadab, and why was the Ark kept there? Well, nobody knows for sure. One thing, though, right from the beginning, David sets out to restore the proper relationship and the proper worship of God. God with his people, his people with God. So David sees that the Ark of the Covenant is brought to Jerusalem. And that brings us right to our text and our reading in 1 Chronicles. 1 Chronicles 16 1 through 11. Let us listen to the word of God. They brought the ark of God and placed it inside a special tent that David had prepared for it. And they presented burnt offerings and peace offerings to God. And when he had finished his sacrifices, David blessed the people in the name of the Lord. Then he gave to every man and woman in all of Israel, a loaf of bread, a cake of dates, and a cake of raisins. And David appointed the following Levites to lead the people in worship before the ark of the Lord, to invoke his blessing, to give thanks, and to praise the Lord, the God of Israel. Asaph, the leader of the group, sounded the cymbals. Second to him was Zechariah, followed by Jael, Shemaroth, Jehalil, Methenia, Elab, Benaha, Obed, Edom, and Jael. And they played the harps and the lyres and the priests. Benaniah and Jehazel played the trumpets regularly before the Ark of God's Covenant. And on the day David gave to Asaph and his fellow Levites this song of thanksgiving to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord and proclaim his greatness. Let the whole world know what he has done. Sing to him, yes, sing his praises. Tell everyone about his wonderful deeds. Exult in his holy name. Rejoice, you who worship the Lord. Search for the Lord and for his strength continually. Seek him. What precedes our reading in Acts 2? Well, I'm glad you asked. The gospel tell us how Jesus was crucified and raised from the dead. Luke opens Acts with Jesus reaffirming his commission to his disciples to reach people, and then he ascends. And beginning in chapter 2, the Holy Spirit comes upon the disciples while they are praying in the upper room. Peter, now filled with the Spirit, preaches his first sermon. 
Verse 41 says, those who accepted his message was baptized and about 3,000 were added to the church that day. This day is recognized as the beginning or the birth of the church. And the paragraph that I'm about to read tells us what the early Christian church was up to. Again, let us listen to the word of God. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing the meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers who met together in one place shared everything they had. In fact, they sold property. They gave up possessions. They shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day. They met in homes for the Lord's Supper. They shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. I don't think our gospel reading today needs any introduction at all. I'll just read it for you. Again, listen to the word of the Lord in Luke 11, 1 through 4. Once Jesus was in a certain place praying, and as he finished, one of his disciples came to him and said, Lord, Teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. And Jesus said, This is how you should pray. Father, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. Give us each day the food we need, and forgive us of our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. In today's text, we have a picture of God's people at an important, if not crucial, juncture in their history with God. In each case, God is about to do something new. In 1 Chronicle 16, God is leading David to restore the rightful worship of God. And David calls out to his people, search for the Lord and for his strength, continually seek him. In Luke, Jesus is delegating his ministry to his newly chosen disciples and teaches them to pray. And in Acts 2, as the newly formed church begins to minister, we are told that they continually devoted themselves to four a thing, to four things, one of which was prayer. In all three cases, God is up to something new in the lives of his people. In all three cases, we see an important juncture in the history of the people of God. And in all three cases, notice prayer. Prayer is a vital ingredient. As we begin a new year with God as individuals and the church, as we embark on a new year in ministry at, here at First Presbyterian Church, prayer will pray an indispensable role in our future, especially at this somewhat uncertain and therefore important juncture in our history. Uncertain, of course, uncertain about the future. You know, the future is something that we wonder about all the time. Sometimes it's the place that we not just wonder, but we worry and we fear. It always yields those up. I mean, good heavens, we're reminded from everything of this world to be on guard. 
to watch out. Oh, we're fixing to talk about Ukraine and Israel, Hamas, and the border situation, and what is Iran up to, and these presidential elections. Yeah, I could talk about that, but I'm talking about things that are closer to home. Like, really? What is my financial picture all about? Really? What am I going to do about my insurance? Really? What do we do about the increasing prices of food? You know, I had a dream last night. I shared this a little earlier with somebody. Last night, last night, downstairs, we were just talking about going to the grocery I don't know. Somebody brought it up, Joe. Who was it? About going to the grocery store. And I said, I had a dream last night that I went in food line down here. And when I went in, it was only half as big as it normally is. And I said to somebody in there, what in the world is going on? They said, haven't you heard? We had to make the store smaller because the food supply chain is getting smaller itself. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that God, God speaks through dreams. I know that. But I'm hoping this was a dream that didn't come from him. You know, the word says to test the spirits. We could talk about that. We could confess that we don't know what the future holds, but we can be confident about one thing. Who holds that future? <laughs> yeah. We don't know who holds tomorrow. Isn't that what the old gospel song says? But I know who holds my hand. It's vital because it's true that you and I pray. Therefore, I'm asking you as your pastor to commit yourself to a life of prayer in 2024. If you have not already, daily prayer. First, I'm asking you to pray for one another. The Bible counsels us to pray for one another, John 5, 16. Pray for one another, Ephesians 6, 18. Pray for all the saints, where the word saint refers to anyone who is a Christian. It is our high calling and privilege to pray for one another. In a general way, all of us can and we should pray. We should pray that we will all remain faithful to Jesus and his church and not become one of those sheep in 2024 that decides to wander away from the fold. We can pray that we will, all of us, avail ourselves to the opportunity to worship each week through the online means available to us, in person, online, wherever it might be. We can pray that we will, all of us, remain faithful to, or in some cases, Renew ourselves to daily scripture reading and prayer. In a general way, all of us can and should pray that we will, all of us, continue to become more like Jesus and that our spiritual growth in Christ will result in acts of love. More specifically, I'm asking you to pray and ask God to prompt you with the names of five of your friends. Well, preacher, I got more than five friends. Good for you. I'm not asking for all of them. I'm saying just pick out five and pray for them every day. Every day of 2024. Just five. That's all I'm asking for. Uh, that you will begin to pray for them on a regular basis. Pray for the four things I've just suggested. Out of love for one another, we'll pray for one another. Second, I'm also asking that we, all of us, pray for our leaders. Paul instructs us to pray for our leaders in 1 Timothy 2. In addition to those four things above, pray that God will grant our leaders the wisdom to make the right decisions here at First Presbyterian Church. And tonight, or this afternoon... We're going to have 12 individuals, four of whom are going to be 
the new class that's joining our session? Do you pray for the leadership of those that God has chosen to lead us in 2024? If you don't, you should. Pray that it's God's will and God's way. Oh, will we ever get away from the plague of, of this thing? Well, I think, well, according to my experience, well, what I've been told, I'm going to tell you, you might be elected to Congress to represent the people, but you are elected to a session to represent God first. Amen. That is what we're seeking to do. Pray for your leaders. Thirdly, I'm also asking that we pray for the various ministries. I like to see something fresh and new come along to encourage us and the ministries that we already have to maintain. But maintaining is not all there is to it. We need to maintain some things. There's some other things we just need to really have a funeral for, bury them, and say, well, here's the epitaph right here. It was good while it was here, but now it's time to move on to something great and grand that God is leading us to, y'all. It's time to do it. Uh, whatever it might be, let us follow the Spirit as it leads us into new beginnings with our walk in Jesus Christ. That's the third thing. Fourth, in addition to praying for one another, for our church and our leaders, I'm also asking you to pray for me. I have an important role to play in your continued spiritual development. I really need God's wisdom to do that for your growth in Christ. You see, I already have a number of top topics in what I call my sermon hopper. And I really need God's help in both confirming that I am on the right track and to help me put it all together in a way that he wants. So please pray for me in that regard. As we begin 2024, let us commit ourselves to praying for all facets of our church. I implore you, I call upon you in the name of the Lord to exercise your Christian duty, but also your Christian love in praying for all of us. In the Lord's Prayer, Jesus instructed his disciples to pray, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's important to remember that the New Testament teaches that God's kingdom comes to the earth through the ministry of his church. His kingdom will continue to come to the community in which we live through the ministry of his church at First Presbyterian Church. I try to encourage when people get to talking about the denomination. Oh, let me tell you, denominations, I think, are God's gift to us. Denominationalism, however, is not. In fact, I think denominationalism is contrary to God's good will and what the Bible is teaching us. Denominations are a tradition by which you can live out this word. Need instructions on being a Christian? What does the billboard say? Read the Bible. And not only do you read the Bible, but you get together with folks of a same and similar kind of experience, and together you create a tradition where you're following the book. Denominationalism says our way is the only way. We're the smartest way, we're the most believing way, we're the most faithful way. Now that is sin uno one. Denominations is God's gift, I think, because it allows us. We can't live all of the traditions, you know, just kind of find the one you believe that the Lord is leading you to. And then do the best. You know, Ava Ford used to have, she, she would say three things 
that was encouraging. Do the best with what you got. Take it one day at a time and make the most of it. You remember her saying that? I do. Three things. I thought, hmm, you know, that's a good mantra. But this is it. We have it. Let's do the best with what we can because it's what the book is teaching us to do and be. Uh, Robert Benson, author of Constant Prayer and writing the vital role of prayer, especially the Lord's Prayer in church, I am increasingly convinced that if the church is to live and actually be alive, one of the reasons, maybe the most important and maybe the only reason, will be because we have taken up our place in the line of the generations of the faithful who came before us who prayed. It will be because we pray the prayer that Christ himself prayed when he walked among us and now longs to pray through us. It will be because we choose to no longer be among the ones who are silenced, but through the prayer that Christ, through his body, prays to the Father. It will be because we make sure that the wave of prayer that sustained the church for all of this time does not stop when it is our turn to pray each day. It will be because we answer the ancient call to pray without ceasing. I'm reminding you, pray for yourselves. So we, we must like, well, take David's advice. Search for the Lord in his strength and continually search him. We must follow the footsteps of our brothers and sisters in the early Christian church who what devoted themselves to prayer. And we must both emulate and instill Jesus' words to his disciples to pray. Your kingdom come, your will be done. On earth, yes, but also in heaven. As I close, allow me to tell a story that I hope will encourage those of you who sometimes wonder if your prayers really have any impact at all. Sometimes you feel like they only get, well, maybe not even above the ceiling. But I want to tell you this. It's a human story, uh, but it illustrates, it illustrates what we've been talking about here, the power of prayer. If you're wondering about how much power God has given us in prayer, after an American B-17 dropped its payload in Berlin during World War II, turned and headed back to England, a group of German fighters appeared on the horizon. American P-51 fighter pilots tried to keep the Germans from attacking the bombers, but they were unable to stop every enemy plane. The crew of this particular bomber stared in horror as they saw five huge bullets penetrate their fuselage where the gas tanks were located. Seeing the damage that had been inflicted on their plane, the German fighter turned and headed for home, assuming victory, that the crew of the bomber waited for the inevitable explosion. But nothing happened. After the crew managed to land safely, they and the maintenance crew began to carefully remove the shells from the fuselage and found that they hadn't exploded. They were merely crumbled. And when they started opening up those bullets, they found that there was no gunpowder at all inside. And when they opened the fifth bullet, they found a tiny wad of paper inside that read, We are Polish POWs forced to make bullets. When guards do not look, we do not fill with powder. Not much, but it is the best we can do. Not much. Just as one small gesture by a few Polish prisoners saved the life of that crew, so even one small prayer 
on our part can have a huge impact on God's kingdom. I wonder if those Polish POWs were aware of Paul's resounding words. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinite more than we might ask or think. But we are, and since we are, we must never underestimate the power of not much when asking God to get involved. No matter whom I'm addressing right at this moment, may I most solemnly assure you that your prayers, yes, your prayers for one another, for our leaders, for our ministries, for your pastor, for yourself, are capable of producing remarkable results on behalf of God and his kingdom. So what is our watchword for 2024? Pray. Please ask God to help all of us here to make 2024 a year of prayer. Lord, renew your church. A prayer once prayed said, Renew your church, beginning with me. Amen. You know, for those that have been to a Presbyterian pilgrimage, this is a familiar saying. God is counting on you. Yes, and I'm counting on God. May that Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift his countenance upon you and grant you his peace now and forevermore. Mm -hmm.